my name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay This By A Modded. Look, I kind of got it in my blood right now, so we need to play a bit more of this construct. I was a little disappointed with how the last run ended, uh, primarily because I'm dumb and should not have used Hard Reboot to get those strikes out of my deck. Instead, I should have accepted that the strikes were in my deck because they would just cycle and get some more damage for us. Oh, well. Choose. So, there was a lot of comment... Uh, in the description for that episode, description for that episode, the comments for that episode, rather, about the cogwheel possibly being a negative for the construct. In particular, saying that I should have traded my starting relic for a random boss relic. So there's two different reasons I didn't want to do that. Number one, it's a new character. Trading their starting relic on the first episode with a new character is little... I probably would have gotten some... Uh, <clears throat> I probably would have gotten some salty comments about that one. Uh, and secondly, the argument for trading it away is that then your first form card will allow you to cycle, right? Because then you'll be, like if you play attack form, right? Attack mode rather. Uh, you'll lower your decks rather than having the decks lower being negated by the cogwheel. And when that's lowered, you will ignore all of the defense in your deck. But the problem is, especially in the early game, and until you have cards that benefit when you cycle other cards, that's a bad thing, surely, right? Because then you can never have a hand that has some defense and some attack, which is a lot of what you want in the early game. So if I could guarantee that I was going to have a cycle deck, then sure, I could do it, but I couldn't guarantee that. And there were in fact a, a couple of commenters that responded to specifically the the question saying, hey, maybe you should have traded away your starting relic for a random boss relic uh, with this exact kind of line of argument, right? Saying that you can't really rely on the build, fitting that afterwards, so it's a little bit uh, of not maybe a great thing to do. I really appreciate that. They both articulated my points pretty much excellently. In fact, I was writing a comment in response explaining how I felt about trading away the opening relic for this character, in particular with the fact that you would then be relying on a cycle build uh, and not allow for diversity of abilities to do things in the early game. And then I refreshed the page and someone had written basically exactly what I was writing, which is lovely. Frankly. Anyhow, I'm probably going to take the 100 gold here. You know how I feel about curses. I'm not even going to check the map before I do it. It's really kind of independent I was going to do that. Okay, I do kind of want to go for as many elites as I possibly can here. It's actually quite a nice path with a relatively early... Not a relatively early shop, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, playing on camera. i got to remember to stop using all of those shortcuts that I keep using when I'm playing alone by myself. All by myself. Not playing all by myself. Uh, Omega Cannon. It's five to four. Deals 20 damage, costs one less for each strength you have, so probably just goes in a strength stack build. I mean... If it goes in a strength sack build, it is zero cost, 20 damage, right? Effectively, at its maximum. Plus whatever strength you have. Zero cost, 20 damage? That great? Like, consider the fact that I turned down Streamline in heavy cycle decks a lot recently. Because I don't think that's necessarily a great pick. Hmm. So after I play my first attack mode, this becomes three energy. I think I'll take this in the early game as kind of something to carry me along, but I don't think I'm going to build around it as my win condition. Keep my pants and upgrade attack mode. Sure. This is a event from the Replay the Spire, which is effectively chooses a card in your deck. You either lose it or you keep it and upgrade it. And it's a really nice way to define a thinner deck. Like, I, I always love, you know, events that allow you to remove cards from your deck because I'm a thin deck daddy at home. 
probably actually going to attack mode, then defend. It doesn't matter which order I do that in right here, because the dexterity loss was negated. But it allows you to define your deck a little in the early game. I quite like it. Mode shift. Swap your strength and dexterity. Draw a card. Now, there was actually a really, really good point about a heavy dexter uh, dexterity build that uses the patient strike. All right, I'm going to forget the name of a bunch of the cards in this game right now because I don't know them yet for the construct in particular. But there's a card that you retain in your hand that for every turn you retain it in your hand deals seven more damage when you eventually use it. So if you put that in a heavy dex deck and just defend for a bunch of time and then wait for a mode shift, then you just mode shift and hit him, right? It becomes ridiculous damage. I, I really like that. That's, that's interesting to me as a deck archetype. I don't think we'll be doing it right now, but it's interesting. Swap your strength and dex and then draw a card. Now upgrades to be zero cost. So basically a zero cost draw a card is, it's a cantrip. It's a, it's a thin witch. It's a card that has no downside. It has no negative impact on your deck archetype. Since it also has swap your strength and dex, we have to consider whether or not that is always a good effect for us. Otherwise, this card can be a negative. And it might be a negative effect for us, so we won't be taking it. I'm not going to take any of those. I'm going to try and do a strength stack build rather than doing what I've done prior, which is the heavy cycle build. There's the Omega Cannon, and hell yeah. Easy. Ooh, Steroid Potion. Gain five strength at the end of your turn, lose five strength. That, for the Construct, is insane. Because in the first turn, you just play it, and then the Cogwheel will negate the five strength loss at the end of the turn. So it's five strength. Ah, Charge Shot. That's, of course, what it's called. Retain, deal five damage, plus five for each turn. This was retained and upgrades to seven. Now, Flak Barrage is a card that I pointed out in the last episode as being particularly good in a strength stacking build. We're doing a strength stacking build. Flak Barrage is probably going to be pretty good. General idea behind it is it cycles if your strength is less than one. And if your strength is one or more, it will deal that amount to a random enemy four times. And then the upgrade, I think, is six times. Yes. So what amount of strength do you have to have for this to be good? Right, consider its upgraded version. If I have two strength, it's deal two damage to a random enemy six times. That's pretty good, right? That's like a unupgraded but lower cost version of Riddle with Holes, the silent card, deal two damage five times for two energy. And we never really get just one strength. So it will always be better than a better version of a different card. I'll take Black Barrage. Uh, Overclock is actually new, so I'll have a quick look at it. At the start of your turn, draw two cards and add a burn to your hand. And it upgrades to be zero cost. Okay, so... Mm, you would have to somehow mitigate the negative effect of the burn, so you would need two extra defense. But I guess if you have a relatively thick deck, which we don't have and almost never will, this is... Not that bad, right? Because you won't get back to the burns. This becomes negative, supremely negative, when you get back to the burns that were initially added into your hand and you start drawing them again. Uh, we'll take Flak Barrage, obviously. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now there it is. Yeah. Uh, Flak is pretty good here. Yeah, I don't need to accept 8 damage this turn. Mm -hmm. Whew. I'm tempted to use my draw here, in fact. I'll defend mode, double defend, and then I'll attack mode just to get back. Mm-hmm. 
Kill him. Easy. Reinforce. Eh. No, not for us. Metal shell, same. Analyze. I've I've spoken about analyze in the last episode. In fact, I've I've read all of these out. But I spoke about analyze in the last episode and said that net it's gaining you a card when upgraded. Uh, just the effect is delayed. So it doesn't really have that much value. Mm. Well, here I definitely have to stereo potion the first turn. Retain that defense mode. Kill. Omega cannon. Black. Strike. Strike. Unfortunately, we didn't get attack mode. If we did, we actually would have just already killed that. Snack pack. Every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain two HP. This is a relic from Replay the Spire. I actually quite like it. Uh, it's one of the few ways that you can get healing and silent. Obviously, you've also got bite and... some other marginal sources that I'm forgetting. But this is a particularly reliable one for the silent because you play a lot of shivs often time in the silent decks. I haven't actually played a shiv deck recently with the silent. Or at least I haven't played many. Uh, okay. So flame core, battery core, hard reboot. Which of these do I want, if any? So battery core is when, uh, cycle. Again, cycle is when it's drawn, you discard that card and draw a new card. It only works once per turn on this instance of the card, which is important to note. You can't infinite off of just one cycle card, or you can't infinite by building your deck just full of cycle cards because it can't continue forever. Eventually, you will draw one of the cycle cards you've already cycled, and that will stop your chain. But this uh, has a card in your hand cost one less for this turn. Okay. Sure. Seems good to me. And upgraded, it will put a battery core into your deck. Okay, so it's about reducing the cost of things further. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I've got good feelings in my bits. Uh, Shuriken, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain one strength. So three attacks in a single turn is going to gain us two HP as well as one strength. And we want strength and we're going to need the HP because we're not demanding. I mean, come on. Uh, so we'll take that. And probably Shift Strike here as well. Now, Shift Strike is deal eight damage, gain two strength, lose two decks. But it's also on a two for one sale right now. So I'll get two of them. Uh, pretty good. Right, cool. But anything in there I've not explored yet. Laser Core, we had last episode. You know, Cycles, when drawn, deal two damage to all enemies. Vent Steam. Yeah, we've... we've had a look at all of these before. This is a new potion, actually. Cursed Concoction. Gain three strength and two dexterity. Add a random curse to your draw and discard piles. Actually, I think I have seen this before. Maybe. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? I'm gonna smith now. That's right, I'm gonna smith now. Uh, let's upgrade that battery core. A bunch of question marks on this side. Hey, tag bag. Shops have all three kinds of sale tags. Sale tags can appear on colorless cards and on sale cards are cheaper. Very, very handy. So I definitely want to upgrade the shift strikes so that I can get my strength higher and decks lower. Gremlins shuffling cards, sure. I didn't look at those closely enough. Backfire has been changed, actually. Oh, I misclicked. I was actually trying to click these two, but I misclicked and I ended up saving myself from getting a curse. Mode shift. Yeah, I don't want that. Panic fire when a non... Um, probably could take panic fire. Hmm... Probably could actually take Dramatic Entrance. Hey, and we got it. Nice. Cool and nice and fun and smart and being nice. Let's... I kind of want to Shift Strike here on the first turn. Yeah, if I use three attacks here on the first turn. Low the strength out of it. Strike again. 
I should probably defend? It's likely I kill next turn if I don't. Okay. Just based off of that, we'll not defend. So it's shift, then strike, then omega. Uh, looks like I could have done it without as well. Vajra, start each combat with plus one strength. All right, the game is really playing into our strength synergy here. Uh, so synchronize is a new power. I've never seen this one before. Uh, when you draw two of the same card in a row, deal 10 damage to all enemies and draw a card. So what would do this? What would do this? Like something that has like a heavy cycle deck that has a lot of the same core would do this quite commonly. It's the upgrade. Oh, it becomes innate. It's the only difference. That doesn't really work in our deck, right? We have... We'd have to draw Shift Strike, Shift Strike, or, you know, Defend, Defend, Strike, Strike. We can't really lean in that direction a little better. And we are going to start removing these basics. Uh, sweep Laser, deal four damage, and then deal four damage to all enemies. Deal six damage, deal six damage to all enemies. So it's a single target and then a multi-target afterwards. That's actually pretty good for an a uh, for AoE for a strength stack build. But the thing is, we also have AoE for a strength stack build in Flat Cannon. Flat ca uh, Barrage, rather. I'm actually, I'm actually leaning towards the Sweep Laser right now. No, we need more reliable AoE. Okay. Dream Catcher, whenever you rest, you may have to come to your deck. Definitely going to be taking the Golden Idol here, and I'll lose the max HP quite willingly. Okay. Upgrading Omega Cannon's probably not even necessary. We get our strength up real quickly. So Omega Cannon already costs less, and that's the only thing it gets for the upgrade. I think we upgrade Flak Barrage. I think I should have done that before I upgraded the Shift Strike as well. I'm very specifically pronouncing that in the way that I am because like shift strike does like it sounds like a single word it blends together if I don't so I'm very specifically saying shift strike very happy to now already have negative decks this means that all my decks cards get cycled there's a shift strike and then yeah with like 11 damage to a random enemy six times we already have that that's pretty insane. There's another card that I know exists for this character that I'm keeping an eye out for. I think it's like Anger Core or something like that. It's a rare card, so we might see it here. We don't, unfortunately. Golden Bullet. Deal 18 damage, lose 20 gold. I don't like that. I gotta be honest, I really don't. So that reminds me of Golden Gun, which is a, a card for the Mad Scientist as well. And the restriction of your resources is just like so difficult to, to really appreciate. There's no reason not to take Battery Core. I'll take it. You can no longer rest at rest sites. It's actually a really big negative for us. Consider the fact that we aren't like, we're going to heal a little bit in battles from the snack pack. We need the extra energy as well. Do we Do we need the extra energy? Not really. The battery cores are already providing our energy pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to take the Busted Crown nor the Coffee Dripper. Instead, I'll actually take Tiny House. Upon pickup, we will gain one potion, 30 gold, raise our max HP by five. We obtain a card and upgrade a random card. And upgraded to defend. That's unfortunate. Hey. So Backfire has been chained since last we spoke. It now does more damage. And I believe also it's been chained so that if you kill the enemy with the damage, that is the damage effect of it, the second effect doesn't trigger, so you won't take the damage. Uh, tumble, draw three cards for each one that cycles, deal five damage. Um, I think I can take that, actually. Right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, my battery cores are the only cards in our deck that cycle, but it, it's it's one energy draw three cards, which is... That's a skim. Skim got nerfed, right? There's also Overcharge here, which is at the start of your turn, gain an energy and add a burn to your hand for the same reason as I explained the 
other power earlier. I think it was called Overclock, actually. Uh, for the same reason I explained that one not being good, this one won't either. No early elites. We've got two late elites over there. Okay. I'm going to go to two early shops just so I can remove two cards, frankly. I'm accepting some damage here, basically. All right. Let's tumble. Yeah, only hit for once, but it's fine. Mm. I'll just naturally defend here. We're fine. Easy. That shift cannon thing is insane. Facility. The target intends to attack, gain seven block, otherwise gain, deal seven damage. Eh. Not gonna take any of those, frankly. Remove a card from my deck, thank you. I'm actually just gonna be like removing a bunch of cards from my deck. Now, after we play two effects that lose decks for us, these defends cycle themselves out of our deck. But I also want to remove them from my deck because up until that point, they are in our deck and they're annoying. Maybe I remove strikes. Because I want to defend in the early game while I get my attack modes and shift strikes going on. And then in late game, that is to say the late part of each combat, they're negated. Yeah, we actually remove the strikes so we can more consistently hit our other things like flak and tumble. Interesting. Ooh. Bag of preparation, though. Do I have enough? Yeah, I have enough to bag of preparation and card removal here. Cool. Um, <laughs> Isolate's actually really interesting. Cycle if there's more than one enemy. Your attacks deal double damage this turn. And then it upgrades to cost zero. Now, the interesting thing about this is it has a conditional cycle, right? But when you get it in your hand and you play it, it's insane. The ultimate defense is power. This is probably from a play to Spire, if I had to guess. Uh, gain one artifact, gain one dex, gain five plated armor and gain five shielding. What's shielding? Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't get described down here at the bottom. It's... Well, hang on. An alternate form of block that can directly block HP loss. Shielding is not lost at the end. I have to imagine of a turn. I, I really can't see what it says at the very bottom there. We're definitely not going to be taking that though. Cool. Uh, well, it's difficult here. We could take Isolate, we could take Card Removal, we could take Bag of Preparation. I could take Bag of Preparation and Isolate, ignore the Card Removal. Yeah, we'll do that. Yup. Is there any card in here that I haven't gone through? I mean, Quick Attack, we went through last episode. Zero damage attack. Not that great, not that garbage. Yeah, if I'm going to get two elites, I still have to go over to the left here, so I'm going to go to a shop that I can't really utilize, but it's fine. Okay. Attack mode. Isolate. Strike, dramatic, and strike. Yeah, this is really bugs. Flat cannon. Ooh. Probably better than a fire potion for us. Antimatter, reduce your energy to zero. Deal three damage for each other card in your hand. So this is for heavy draw decks, effectively, right? And the upgraded version is four damage for each other card in your hand. So reduce your energy to zero. I mean, reduce your energy to zero just means you play it at the end of your hand, but if you're playing it at the end of your hand, you probably played everything else that you can afford already, which means that your hand size is probably going to be more limited. I don't really see the use case for this being particularly useful. The use case for it being particularly useful. I don't see the case for it, rather. 
memory tap. We've spoken about this one before. At a random rare... Uh, at a random red, green, and blue card to your hand, they cost zero exhaust. For the same reason that I don't particularly enjoy, you know, Infernal Blade or uh, Distraction or uh, the power that puts common cards into your hands. Uh, Hello World. For the same reason I don't particularly enjoy those. They dilute your deck. So, not going to be taking that. Um, hmm, deal nine damage. Put this on top of your draw pile. Yeah. Panacea is not bad, but we also, like, the negatives that we get, we don't really care about. So, while it would negate negatives, it's not negating negatives that I care about. So, probably not worthwhile for me. I'm not going to take another ship strike here, though. I'll save my money. Mm -hmm. Making those isolates cost zero is actually pretty consequential. Sure. I wonder if they stack. Apparitions? Are they excellent or are they garbage? I mean, the deck is hyper-aggressive, but it does need kind of combo pieces as well. So Apparitions diluting my hands so that I don't get, you know, three attacks in the same hand uh, is, is going to be a problem. I'm not going to take it, but I can definitely see the argument being made for it. Okay. Definitely going to attack mode. Let's tumble here. Shift strike. Strike. And this is just so I can get as much strength as is possible before I play the dramatic entrance. Another attack mode, quite easy. Mm hmm. Mm, delectable. Fear potion. Apply three vulnerability. That's actually going to be way better than swift potion. It's going to allow us to kill things quite quickly. Uh, gain six blur and one vulnerable. Yeah, we don't really block, so not a great card for us. Uh, accumulate. Deal seven damage. Make a copy of a non rare card in your draw pile. The only card that I would copy in my draw pile, like actively, would be. You know, the battery cores. And that's rare, so that's not going to work. And we've seen Metal Shell before. Cool. Darkstone Periapt. Whenever you obtain a curse, increase your max HP by 6. Yes, yeah. uh, I feel not going to be impactful for a character who... For a character. For a person who very specifically avoids... Wait a second. Alright, I'm going to use Swift Potion here. Because this fight could actually be a problem. Quickly drop a double defend there because they're free. And that's the best price. Yeah, this dramatic can now kill that backliner. Good. Hey, there we go. Pretty much exactly how I wanted that one to go down. Uh, Flak Barrage is going to murder here. By setting up for the kill. Scope core. This is interesting. When cycled a random enemy gains one vulnerability. Yes. We need a way to deal some vulnerability. Boosters, deal two damage. Deal. Oh, okay, so this is a tiny version of uh, Iron Wave, effectively. Take scope core. Beautiful. I am really, really, really pleased about that one. Okay. It's definitely shift strike. Omega Cannon, then strike the front line, and dramatic. So I'm going to take 12 here. But honestly, it'd be a lot worse. Double damage down? Huh? I, I played those in the wrong order. I should have played both of the defenses first. But I was really... What? So doubling your damage twice removes the double damage. That's not cool. So Crippling Shot is interesting. Deals zero damage. If this deals unblocked damage, apply 99 weak and exhausts. 
that's actually really cool. It's just a way to weaken a target in a strength build, right? And in a strength build, this is actually, this, this shows some really thoughtful design, right? In a strength build, you want to use everything except for block, especially in the construct where you're trading away your decks for your strength. You want to use everything except for block to lower the amount of damage that you take. Weakness is a way to do that. Killing a target before it attacks is a way to do that. Um, I'll be taking the crippling shot though. I actually should have checked what it does on the upgrade. We'll do that in a moment. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be attack mode first. Dramatic entrance will definitely be killing the sneaky gremlin here. So We're fine on that front. Wait, how did I already lose dex? Oh, did I play an attack mode and then a shift strike? I should have counted my energy beforehand and then played the defend accordingly. That's my bad. I would have had two more defense. It wouldn't have been super significant, but it would have been some significant. Mm, unfortunately, because I got isolate, my earlier play was... Uh, how do you say garbage? Thankfully, it didn't matter. Bottled Flame. Upon pickup, choose an attack card. At the start of each combat, that attack card will be in your opening hand. We'll pick up here first. Force Core. Yes. Uh, when cycled, gain one strength until the end of this turn. Upgrades. Puts a Force Core in the pile. Yes, we'll be taking that. Thank you. Bottled Flame. What do I want in my opening hand in terms of an attack card? Because the Flak Barrage gets better when I have strength. Uh, uh, strength, yeah. Right? I already have Dramatic Entrance in my opening hand. Uh, crippling shot. If the enemy starts with a block, then the crippling shot won't be effective. But I start with one strength from Vajra. So, yeah, I'm going to bottle flame the crippling shot. And we'll have a look at its upgrade as well. Crippling shot. Oh, it just deals three bites. Eh, that's not necessary. We'll upgrade the force core, huh? Hmm. Yes, excellent, good. I'm tempted to isolate. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I should. Then we'll start with shift strike. Then Omega con uh, Cannon is zero, and it deals double damage, which is good. 22 and 22, I mean... First. Yeah, I thought we were going to be able to kill on turn one. Frozen Egg. Whenever you add a power card to your deck, it is upgraded. Nice. Speed Potion is never going to be good for us. Um, Tail Size, Bubble Shield, and Auto Turret. Yeah, none of these are great for us. Bubble Shield is cycle if your dex is less than one. Gain armor equal to your dex. That's, again, never going to be good for us, right? We're up against the Automaton at the end of this floor. I should... Probably upgrade the other isolate here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, crippling shot's never gonna be better than this, I guess. So there's no reason not to play isolate. There's no reason not to play isolate. If I play three cards before the Omega Cannon, then I can play the Omega Cannon for three, uh, free. That is, play three attacks before the Omega Cannon. Because then I get an energy, and then that energy allows me to play the Omega Cannon. Now, unfortunately, our other Isolate will start to cycle at this point, which is, uh, you know, not good. Maybe it's Stereo Potion time. I'm fine with not perfecting, naturally. Shift and shift and strike and strike. Wah. Oh, those cycles. We can now actually apply vulnerability to our enemy. And in fact, I will do so. There's your vulnerability, friend. 
For each one that cycles, deal 30, uh, 66 damage. There's one card in that deck that will cycle. Hey, and we got it. Beautiful. That was nice. All right. We've spoken about all of these ones before. Bunker, I guess we spoke about the least. When a card is retained, gain four block. We very rarely do that. So. <sighs> Do we need to upgrade any more cards in our deck? Do we need energy? We don't need energy. So, probably Kintsugi, the Japanese art of mending broken ceramics with gold. There's actually a lovely description about the inspiration for the design of this in a recent episode by the Evil Pickle from the Replay the Spire mod team. It's, I, I think it's excellently designed, frankly. It's also going to give us six, uh, 12 max HP. Yeah, we'll do it. It's probably three strikes that we remove. Yeah. <gasps> three strikes. Four, four strikes, all defense? I mean, defense mode. Definitely. Yeah. Now, the, uh, I have seen this actually recently. I meant to report this. But consider this my bug report. Uh, something is making the curses that you obtained from Kintsugi appear like this. Eh. Abe's Revenge is actually not even bad for us, right? Gain too frail. We don't play cards with defense, so it's not going to be a problem. So we'll accept that card. And then the other one that we can see here is doubt. Unplayable at the end of a turn, game one week. That's actually really bad for us. Eh. Hang on. Hey, there we go. Yep, managed to get him. So we'll remove the doubt as fast as we possibly can. And the fastest we possibly can looks like it is just a couple spaces ahead of us. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, man. Ah, oh, mucked that up. Cycle twice as well there. Damn. We're already dealing double damage. There we go. Liquid Bronze. Gain three thorns. Mm. Shift Guard is the inversion of Shift Strike. Not going to take it. And yeah, the rest of these we've spoken about before or recently. Gosh, I don't like that we're getting the uh, doubt in opening hands a lot here. Oh boy. I mean, this fight has a spiker in it. We were going to always take damage in this fight. Let's be real. It's a lot of cycling. I probably shouldn't have targeted the target that I targeted. Oh, well. Uh, fire Potion and Electrocute. Deal 26 damage. Target loses 7 strength for the rest of the turn. Depends who our final boss is. How easily can I remove the artifacting from Dono and Decker? Because Dono and Decker always multi-attack, right? Or rather, one of them is always multi-attacking. So, removing 7 strength is actually really big. I'm going to take it. I think we can remove the artifacting. Hey, Gritting Jar. <laughs> uh, that greedy, greedy pot. Oh my god! Two for one on the force. Uh, okay, I've got a card remove. I've got to take the Grinning Jar. And I've got to take the two for one on the force call. Gatling gun. Deal four damage to a random enemy two X times. So is that two times what you cast it for? So if I cast it for, I mean, because we don't get extra energy in this build, right? Because instead we're using force core as our energy generation, quote unquote energy generation. So Gatling can only ever be cost for three. So six damage to a random enemy six times. So if it's dealing six times, that's just a bad flat cannon. 
right? It's just a bad flat cannon for us. I think we take the Force Core, definitely. The Grinning Jar and the card removal here. Uh, enhance is also each turn. Upgrade two random cards in your discard pile for this combat. Uh, not necessary. The jar is pleased. We get three Grinning Jars. Now, the Grinning Jars, you get uh, one for each 12 cards in your deck, plus one by base, if I recall correctly. So I exactly have enough to get three of these at the moment. So it's good that I didn't remove a card from my deck yet. Um, but they have the modifier on them. You cannot play another Grinning Jar this turn. So as long as a Grinning Jar doesn't draw two Grinning Jars that are unplayable, then it's a net benefit of cards. But when you upgrade these, they lose the text. You may not play another Grinning Jar this turn. Also, they help you, you know, summon Exodia. Because your grandfather's deck has no weak cards. Begin to fall. Lose the defend blast, yeah. Mm -hmm. Attack mode. Isolate. Shift first, definitely. I mean, that's just a lot of damage, Mon, Mon Frere. Definitely Isolate. Definitely Grinning Jar. See, it did end up drawing two Grinning Jars, so... That's why it's important for me to have made the point I made before. Because if I said, oh, it's never going to have a downside, and then that happened to me... Imagine what a fool I'd look. Nice light. Okay. Mm, unbalancing blast is interesting. I just don't know how I would use it, right? Deal 16 damage, swap your draw pile and your discard pile. I guess because your discard pile would have more of your cycle cards in it. It's a way to refuel your cycles. Costs too much and does too little for us to really take. Okay. Definitely isolate, definitely grin. Electrocuting this turn is going to be GD insane. Oh, look, you can't deal any damage. Also, I think... No, you're not dead. You are, however. Very close. How likely is it I deal nine attacks worth this turn? Very unlikely, frankly. We can isolate, but it's not going to do anything. Mmm... I deal one damage, right? The enemy has intangibility. Ow. So I should have just used the fire potion at the end of last turn. That's my bad. Pen nib. Every 10th attack you bleed deals double damage. As long as we can stack that with an isolate, that's going to be insane. Again, seen all of these before. Not particularly interested in them right now. Okay, we got some extra energy out of that. I'm pretty happy about it. Um, hmm. Probably like crippling Omega. Well, I make it cost zero if I play three attacks before it, right? So if I play, like, no crippling, but I play dramatic ele uh, electrocute and flak barrage, then Omega will cost zero. I wanted to play flak barrage uh, last so that I would get the extra strength, but playing an extra attack is so much more powerful. Cool. 
uh, attack mode isolate and tumble. Tumble. That'll do. Oh, we've seen all of these before. We play a lot of cards in a turn. I have to imagine, yeah, the cycled cards aren't going to count as quote unquote played here. Definitely need to isolate, definitely need to attack mode, definitely need to play one of the Grinning Jars. I can double the damage of that Electrocute. It would be Crippling Dramatic Electrocute. In the shelf, we'll do that. 198 damage. Mm, hit him with that sweet DMG, friend. Oh, God. Imagine a Necronomicon in this character's deck. Just saying. Can you imagine? <clears throat> There's an Isolate for us. See, this is the problem with cores, right? This this is why they can have a downside. If they cycle back into your hand in this in this manner, right? You draw the end of your deck, you shuffle a new deck, and then they happen to be the ones you immediately draw. It can be a little bit frustrating. Not that much, though, mind. But it can be. Tumble, isolate. Ooh, Master Core. At the start of each combat three, shuffle three random cores into your draw pile. Sure. Electric armor. Cycle if your dex is less than one. Gain thorns equal to your dex. That's not gonna be relevant for us. Ah, uh, it now has an exhaust. Okay. I, I think maybe that didn't have an exhaust before, but I don't recall. I definitely don't, still don't take Gatling Gun. It has to be two times X that they're they're saying that. I mean, if I had more energy, this would be a lot better, right? It becomes much better every single time you get an extra energy because it's two time uh, two better per energy gained. Just for us, it's not good. Let's take a master call. Chameleon ring. Your potions are more potent. You can now brew at rest sites. Now, interestingly. There was, again, from the Evil Pickle, there was a description of why the potion... A, a potion generated at the same time as the Chameleon Ring would not be affected by it. Because the Chameleon Ring will delete all of these and then replace them with the upgraded version, but the one that's generated at the same time is not affected in the same fashion. So these should be, yeah, they're all upgraded now, right? We're getting 30 damage, we're getting three energy, we're getting four thorns. Four thorns is my least favorite character from community, actually. Uh, force core, force core, and flame core, hell yes. Good Lord. That's a lot of cycling. Isolate. I'm doing double damage. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> That's a big dramatic entrance. That's not how dramatic entrance usually do. Hmm. <laughs> Bandana. Game three thievery. The first three turns of combat it got nerfed, I believe, after a video I made on it. Whoops. <laughs> uh, fire potion as well as... Suppressive Fire is, I guess Suppressive Fire is made for decks that attack, but don't lower their strength. I don't know if that many of those exist for the Construct. That said, I am you know, new to the Construct, so I will find out over time. Next turn, gain 13 block. Nope. Our decks are so low that we'll read next turn, gain zero block at all times, pretty much. Although... Definitely grin. Okay, the 
attack mode tumble. Cycled a couple cards there. It only worked once. Reach the cycles deals. Hmm. I. It feels like that wasn't working, but I can't. I can't rightly tell, actually. Attack potion, add a random attack card to your hand. It costs zero this turn. That is not made more powerful by the chameleon ring. Hmm. Black barrage. Thousand percent black barrage. Okay, jump inside to heal full HP, but lose 12 max HP, or I can get a bunch of gold. Frankly, I don't think Donu and Decker are going to kill me, so I'm going to take the gold, and then I'm going to go to the left and take the shop, see if I can get anything super potent here. Yeah. Hmm. Electrocuted some damage, but... Should have done that in a different order. Oh well. Electrocute some damage, but the negative effect of it wouldn't really work on the more. Hmm. And of course, none of them cycle this time. Do I even want to take one damage here? Not really. <laughs> uh, another Omega Cannon? No. No. No, 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 no. Yes, it's good, but is it better than not having it? That's always the comparison that needs to be made. Bandage up actually could be good in this deck. Uh, guidebook upon upgrade uh, on upon pickup upgrades two cards randomly. Prioritize res rarer cards. Sure, we'll take that. We'll take bottled lightning and we'll take back of uh, the back of marbles. In fact, okay, upgrade a battery core. Sure, uh, bottled lightning. Now, what do I want to put in my opening hand in particular? It's attack mode actually. Oh my god, steroid potion. <gasps> now that's frankly just evil. I'm also going to smith here and try and smith a grinning jar. If I could have smithed all of the grinning jars, I would have been really happy about it. But unfortunately, we can only smith most of the grinning jars. Oh, I know. How terrible. Unfortunately, the negative debuff of losing seven strength occurs at the end of the turn. So if I was going to play attack mode this turn, and I was going to play attack mode this turn, uh, attack mode was going to remove my artifacting anyway. So the steroid potion is not going to stay with me. Which I should have known because I, I put the attack mode in my opening hand using the bottle of lightning, which I put, picked up at the same store. So yes, I, I should have I should have known that was a, a thing that I was going to face as a problem. Frankly, my bad. I can double the damage of either Flat Cannon or Electrocute Tap. Okay. Shift. Then Electrocute. Crippling shot. This is just removing that artifacting so that my cores later work better. 32 damage to random enemy six times. I mean, frankly, I, I consider that a triumph. And only one of them cycle. In fact, it didn't even cycle. Okay, Omega, and then. Pretty easy. 
black. And we'll have a kill next turn. All right, this is now my first successful run with this character. And I am feeling good with a capital G. I like it. I like it. Especially the fact that you can mitigate the negative effects of not getting energy relics in particular with these battery cores. I really, really like that. 860. Yeah, we're not playing it in Ascension mode. We didn't go for every available elite. We did go for many of them. Didn't go for all of them. Uh, got two champions and no perfects. I wonder how likely you really are to get perfects with the strength stacking build here. That sounds like a question for future Rhapsody. For the moment, though, my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been... Slay the Spire modded. Specifically with the Mod the Spire format, Base Mod API, Replay the Spire Overhaul, and the Construct Character Mod. All of them linked in the description down below, as well as a video wherein I teach you how to install mods in the current Early Access phase of the game. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we will see you next time, John. That's right, I saw you tell me you weren't Kevin. You're John. Enjoy yourself, John. <laughs>